Hey guys, Henning and Morton here, and uh, today we're going to do a punching bag in Marvelous Designer. It's a kind of a weird topic, I suppose, because um, I guess this is not something you would normally make in Marvelous Designer, but I was at the gym this morning and I saw a punching bag and I thought it would be cool to try and make it in Marvelous Designer. So yeah, I had something a... which is not just a t-shirt. Because <laughs> there's just many t-shirts. Um, so I had to play around with it uh, earlier today, so I'm just going to take you through how the, how the process would work. Uh, making a punching bag is very simple in Marvelous Designer, but it's sort of like figuring out the pattern. That's the, I guess, always the tricky part. So for something like this, I have sort of broken the, the punching bag into three patterns. I've found some reference of a punching bag, you know, so there's the top part, then there's the middle round part, and then there's the bottom part. So the top and the middle part are the same, and then you have this long rectangular piece that sort of wraps around, like, that makes the sausage part. So... Um, I just want to start out with making like a rectangle, something like that. So that just so you can visualize, this is not how I'm actually going to start, but this is what's going to wrap around like that. So this is going to get sewn to there and then we'll have some top pieces. So I think the easiest way to sort of do this is uh, to focus on the top pieces first, uh, because that gives us the, the size of the punching bag. So for this, I just, uh, I've started out with a like a just a sheet and then i'm just going to wrap that to where i sort of want it to be so that'll be the bottom and then we'll just have an identical piece that's the top now this might seem a little strange but i'll show you why i wouldn't do it with rectangles so by showing you with rectangles to begin with um i think they would be they're great for getting the measurement so uh so sort of like let's see so i'll just put that there and then what you can do, is, so what I'm going to do with this piece, I'm going to unfold it four times so we have this length, because then that length will sort of correspond with how many times this goes around. So smart. So you can just select all of those points out here, uh, right click them, say align, and two point y axis. Now, then this point is just going to go in just a tiny bit. So that just ensures that they're, they're you know, aligned to the, to the y axis, so they're all equally long. And then we can see just by looking at this, okay, normals are facing out this way, but the normals are facing out the wrong way here. You can either rotate this or flip normal. Oh, it's always <laughs> terrible. We're trying to avoid terrible puns here, <laughs> but it's gotta be done. So I just saw that um, these patterns are actually, uh, they're like, um, what are you called? Instances of, of each other. So you can see when I, when I mirror one, it actually also mirrored the other one. So just mm. make sure that you don't have that uh, otherwise this isn't gonna work so there you go so now that's correct now this is wrong so let's just flip that as well um, have to do that in the 3d report so then just to get the length of the little sausage part I just hit Z to click right click on one line I hit unfold that's just gonna unfold over to where the line was I'll hit unfold again and now we have four sides to, to this rectangle so now we know that this is the length that we wanted uh, hit Z again, select the individual points, and then I'm just going to delete those. Now the tricky part here is getting this to wrap around without, without actually breaking it. Uh, for anyone who's used Marvelous before, you know that once you start simming, things have a tendency to like create black holes and everything just gets sucked into it. Uh, so it's like trying to figure out ways to have that not happen. So for the first part, um, we're actually just going to freeze the top and the bottom because then we don't need to worry about the, those when we're simming right now. So first we just want to wrap this to the other side. So hit N for sewing and now you can see we have sewing lines going over to the other side. So with W I'll just, I'm just going to tap a few places on this punching bag. This is just so uh, we can start to wrap this around. If I don't put these pins in here, that's what W does. Uh, this is just going to fall to the floor and that's not going to be a lot of use to us. Okay, one last thing I want to do is just increase the particle distance to something like 30. That just decreases the resolution of the fabric, so it makes it quicker to sim. So let's just try and sim that. So that's going to go over there and create some weird Dumamo dimension for a <laughs> while and then uh, hopefully that's that's gonna resolve itself. I think you broke physics here. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are ways around it. You can always go in and um, Like you select the fabric and you up the pressure 
like that. This is super cool. <laughs> uh, and there we go. Now we have a perfect shape. So now we can hit Control W just to get rid of our temporary um, pins here. So now we're gonna weld the part, the bottom and the top part. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, where I first unfreeze this, and then we'll just put some pins in place. So we'll just put four pins in there. And we'll unfreeze that one as well. Now it's just about figuring out how to weld this to it. And this is where I always get confused because it's 3D space and 2D space. And you're trying to figure out how to sew something in 2D space while it's actually in 3D space. So if you select your mesh out here in the 3D view, you can see where your point actually is. So this point here, I want it to be there, right? But you can see that this point actually corresponds to that point up there. Uh, just that's just something to keep in mind. This gets particularly confusing if you have something more complicated, like than like two squares. Yeah. But if you have like some more complex fabrics, you really have to use that visualizing feature. So there, I just rotated it just by rotating that, and now you can see this point corresponds to that, and that makes it easy to to weld. And we'll just check that for this bottom part as well. That goes there. So okay, that's what we would expect. That was lucky. <laughs> So Marvelous has this great segmented sewing feature if you just hit M. So you select here and then we just go all the way around. And now, oh, let's do that again. Hit enter, it's very important. And now sew it to this line. So now Marvelous figures out the distance between these points and just translates it evenly, distributes it evenly to all these points up here. And we wanna do the same thing for this one. Just go around, make sure to hit enter. That's an easy one to forget <laughs> because I forget it all the time as well. There we go. And now these are suspended with the pin. So we'll just sim it again. Boop. And now we have kind of a bag. So obviously not really punching bag right now, but we'll get to that. So I'm just gonna turn off the grid, the 3D grid here so we can see it from the bottom. Now the issue is we have a square. And that's not really what a punching bag looks like because you know, it's a circle. But the nice thing about this method is now I've measured it out. So now I know what sort of approximate size I want. I can just go in with the circle tool, uh, hold on shift to make it uh, constrained. And then that's roughly the size of my uh, top and it's gonna be at the bottom as well. So I can just delete that. Uh, just hit A to select the pattern, Control C, Control V. It's pretty intuitive. And just paste it down there as well. So now we have a top and we have a bottom. There we go. So with those position, with those position, there we go. We can go ahead and check again like we did before, just to make sure. Okay, that corresponds to that point and that's where I wanna weld it. So with M again, segmented sewing, just go all the way around. I hit delete, not enter. <laughs> hit enter, there you go. And then there you go. Now this has been sewn, well, it's been pre-sewn to that. And then we wanna do the same thing down here. Just make sure that that point is where it's supposed to be. And we just move this up a little bit. Segmented sewing, go all the way around and do the same thing there. There you go. Now let's try and we'll just put some temporary pins on this as well just so it doesn't fall to the ground. Like that, now it's been sewn. Undo that. And let's move the pins onto the actual punching bag itself. Because right now it's on the circuit or the, the square sheet out here. So you can hold down W and just tap the temporary pins as well. Like the temporary pins is my favorite tool. Um, all the tutorials we've ever done, I've also mentioned it just because it's a great tool. There you go. So now the punching bag is sort of hanging. Um, you know, it's not a realistic sim kind of thing we're doing here. So now you can see we get that classic punching bag leather pattern down here, but we can spice it up a little bit more. If you just select your pattern here, go down to pressure, kind of what we did before with the sheet. And then just, just give it a little bit of pressure. And that way it's sort of like, it's gonna bounce out. And you can, you can adjust this real time as well if you don't want it like that. Or if you want even more to have like okay, it's a really heavy punching bag, for example. I love this. That yeah. you can just procedurally do this. <laughs> so I mean, you know, that's that's pretty much the basis of it. Let's see. We'll just position this a little bit better. Now the pressure 
is going to be a little bit sensitive if this isn't centered correctly. Now you can see it's a little bit off, but you know, for our purposes, that's fine. So just to make it a little more sexy, I, um, I preloaded a material that I made, which is this bag material. <laughs> and uh, we have a very nice <laughs> logo here. So if you just go to the 2D texture editor, I think it's called, what's it called? Edit 2D texture and just select your fabric. You can sort of like position this around any way you any way you want. Um, rotate it around and then you can also move it around and scale it up and down up here. So the infamous company name company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Company name company. So and that sort of like produces that. Just and then just as a final thing, you just wanna select your fabrics, 2D view is again, and then up the will lower the particle distance to increase the resolution. So I'm just gonna set this to 15 and then resim again. And now you can see we get this super tight, um, kind of like leather feel to it. Um, just worth mentioning as well, I've selected the leather type of just as a display material and the leather cowhide as the actual physical property for this. And if you wanted to play around more with how this sort of folds, you could decrease the size of this where it gets welded to and now we'll have even more of these tiny little wrinkles. And if you wanted less, you would obviously just increase the size of that. So that's pretty much how you make a punching bag in Marvelous Designer. I'm sure there's other ways, but this was just uh, one way that we just thought of and wanted to share with you guys. And if you guys have anything else you guys want us to make in Marvelous Designer, we're more than willing to hear your ideas especially like uh, weird stuff yes. that's not just t-shirts uh, we would we would love to do more of that for you because it's actually kind of interesting to solve these challenges in marvelous designer it's you could totally do this in zbrush of course but just look at like the nice detail that we get here and you know we could even we sort of like simulate that uh, this thing is now you know suspended in air by just stretching these up more and then you would have like some really nice streaks going down the um, down the, the the leather here, and you could even saw like weld stuff to the pattern like with an internal line mm. to simulate uh, the um, the sort of uh, straps that's connected to the punching bag. So you know, there's definitely a lot of things that you could do in Marvelous Designer, where you get maybe like ninety to ninety five percent of the way, take this acid into ZBrush, just finish it off, and you already have a a good acid. Yeah, I can confidently say that I could not do this in ZBrush in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, no. This would take me like a few hours to do. Yeah. And it wouldn't even look as good. Yeah, and the nice thing is, I mean, we can just, we can play around with the resolution. We can play around with the size of this if we wanted something different. Um, like we showed before, increasing or decreasing the pressure here mm -hmm. is, is a great way to sort of make it bulge out. You could do airbags and and pillows and that kind of stuff as well. Oh, maybe a pillow tutorial. That's a pillow good is cool. <laughs> A ghost, maybe? Oh, fuck's sake, not that <laughs> fucking ghost. <laughs> uh, yeah, but if you want to see more content like that in the future, maybe ghosts, uh, make sure to <laughs> leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you'll be notified every time we put out a new video.